Our Old Testament reading today comes from Genesis 32, 22 to 31. I kind of switched it around. We usually do the New Testament first and then the Old Testament. But interesting enough, this week while I was on vacation, I went to look for this scripture in my Bible, in my little Bible that I've had for many, many years. As you can see, it's rather tattered. But that and only page 34, it was scrunched up. So I thought, oh goodness, I'm going to have to go and get the paper towel and the iron and iron the Bible so I could read it. I don't know if y'all can see that, but as you can see, it's, it's pretty tattered. And it looks like it was wrestling. It looks a little bit like somebody was wrestling. And I don't know how many times in my life have I asked the Lord, am I doing okay? Am I doing what you want me to do? Shall I do this? Shall I do that? Or shall I pull away and not do anything? And then you go ahead and be obedient. But I invite you to listen as I read. The same night he got up, and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the, the stream, and likewise, everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. And when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip. And Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniliel, saying, for I have seen God's face to face. And yet, my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penelio, limping because of his hip. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The title of this sermon is called Blessings from God, but it can also be called Wrestling with God. This week I was on PL, or what they call personal leave, and I took some time just to sort of be. And it was good time. Respite is a good thing. I learned that I must practice riding my bike. For 20 plus years, I have not been on a bike, or maybe even longer. My husband said that I got on that bike like a bad out of blank. <laughs> 
because I was so excited. I felt like a little schoolgirl getting on that bike and pedaling down the street of my, by my house and turning the corner and going down that cul-de-sac and then realizing I was tired. <laughs> my husband laughed at me for the rest of the day. I even, if I can do it, I even took a picture. This is the hat I wore. And then I wore one of my t-shirts that was given to me from one of my sons. And I took a before picture and an after picture of the ride. And my hat was on right and my complexion was normal. But when I arrived home, my hat was on backwards because I could get the sweat. This thing here collected the sweat. I put a little piece of tissue underneath there because the sweat was going down my face and my heart was beating fast and my thighs burned. Has anybody had their thighs burned? <laughs> well, I felt like somebody had set my eyes on fire. Truth is, I was just plain old out of shape. But something in my soul would not allow me to give up, so I got back on that bike, not the next day, but the day after, and I wrestled with it, and I got a few blocks further. So you see, Jacob wrestled with God. Jacob was called Israel after he wrestled with God. And I want to give you a little bit about Jacob because you probably, since he's the patriarch, you might not have remembered, but Jacob was a Hebrew patriarch who was the grandson of Abraham, the son of Isaac and Rebekah, and the ancestor of the people of Israel. Jacob was the second born of Isaac's children, and the elder being his fraternal twin brother Esau. And you remember, Jacob received his father's, Isaac's blessing by tricking him because he was old and he was blind. And you see, Jacob was able to usurp that blessing that belonged originally to Esau as the firstborn son, and Jacob became the leader of their family. Now, if you remember also, there was a severe drought in his homeland of Canaan, and Jacob and all of his descendants, with the blessing and the power and the support of his son Joseph, the one with all the colors, in the coat, who had since become the trusted confidant or confidant of Pharaoh and moved to Egypt, where he eventually died at 147 years old. Now, one might say that if you describe Jacob in this way, he represents and embodies the whole nation of Israel. He typifies the settler farmer, the reverend worshiper of God, the penitent brother, the benevolent father. And remember, he had that preferential treatment for one of his sons, Joseph, the one with the many colors and the coat. And if you remember, that also caused a lot of strife in the family. As you can remember, the boys all got jealous of Joseph and eventually sold their own brother into slavery. Now, I'm not going to go through all the story, but it's interesting how 
in the Old Testament, it talks about real feelings of jealousy and love and hate and intermersed with that is love and God's love. You see, the Old Testament recounts and talks about the shadow lives of human beings and how God works miracles within Jacob's imperfect and sometimes ours tattered beings. You heard today how Mo eventually came to Christianity and our princess sometimes doesn't want to do what she is told to do or is a little bit hesitant. Both of those folks have experienced wrestling with God and I'm sure every single one of you have thought about those situations in your own life where you have wrestled with God. And sometimes it leaves you limping a little bit. You know, life has its thing, doesn't it? And the older we get, yes, the wiser we get, hopefully with blessing, but also it might leave us with a few scars. A scars that are basically the testimony of who we are in God's heart and in our own hearts. Now, I enjoyed this past week. I did a lot of organizing, which makes me feel like I'm empowered. <laughs> I looked at my office at the house, and they had boxes everywhere, and I was able to exercise and get on a bike, even though almost every block I felt like I was going to fall off. But as God would have it, I didn't. It doesn't mean that I might not fall in the future, but it does mean that God was there as I was having my burning thighs and my sort of shimmying way of riding my bike. And of course, I've never seen my husband laugh so hard. <laughs> But it brought me down a whole lot of notches. Because, you know, in organization, you feel if everything is in a line, you feel like you got some control. The other thing I was able to do during vacation was to sit, sit, and turn on, what is that called, the television? and see John Lewis's funeral. Um, and as you know, three presidents spoke, and it was awesome. But I started to think about the wrestling that John Lewis went through to fight for civil liberties and civil rights. Someone had taken a baton and hit him and cracked his head to the point where he had a concussion. But as God would have it though, he did not die that day because he said someone helped him and he can't remember, but they whisked him away, pulled him, pulled him, pulled him to safety after he was hit in the head. And he didn't give up. He persisted in making sure that all people, not just black and brown people, but those who are gay, those who are straight, those who are transgender, all people, those people that are Asian, that are, that are of all colors, have civil rights and civil liberties. And I started to think about his walk and how he could have given up, but he didn't give up and how this stuff called COVID can also make us give up. It breaks your spirit sometimes. How our children sometimes can break our hearts when 
Do you see them going a way in which they need to turn back and they don't do it quickly? But as God would have it, as people of God, being persistent in our faith is what we are about. Now, every single one of us in here, except for maybe one person, has a gray hair or two. Anybody that does not? Mo, you do not, but the rest of us do. <laughs> And sometimes we like to have the hat on the right way because it looks better. But God has us wearing it backwards because it collects the sweat and the tears. It collects the crime and makes us stronger. The blessings of God, ladies and gentlemen, it's not always tied up with a bone. It doesn't always look pretty as that rose or as pretty as these flowers or as organized as these pictures. Sometimes those blessings are this way and that way, and sometimes we choose maybe not to listen, but God prevails. Jesus' walk on this earth prevails every single day. 
And as a woman of God, I'll just say, imperfect as I may be, with situations that makes my hat be bound and my legs burn. And as I go through stuff in my life, which I did this week, I found this. Deep in a folder, as you can see, it's a little tattered. And this was a piece of paper that was folded up. And I thought, what in the world? You know how you do. This was written by somebody in my family. And I want to read it to you. It was written November 7th, 1981. Anybody still living in 1981? <laughs> It is not the time for academic exercises, not the time for investigating the intellectual gymnastics of educational political theorists. Today is for believing, believing that there truly must be a God who loves. Only love could sharpen the senses into perceiving the rare beauty of such a day. Only love could prepare the mind to absorb the images of majestic pines swinging in adoration of the sun's bird of vibrant reds and blues, quarreling on the bare pecan tree only love could tune the ear to hear the sound of flowers slumbering into winter. Only love. November 7, 1981. My mama wrote this. Only love what we're about. Only love is where our hearts should be. Only love makes us fight 